Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. Today we're going to give you 14 fantastic RV travel experiences in the hopes of maybe inspiring you and giving you some ideas for some places that you could visit with your own RV. All right, first up, our wedding. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, this may be something that's passed for many of you, but we did take our RV on our wedding trip. We got married in Key West, Florida, and we hauled our little Airstream down to Key West and set up camp and spent the week there while we got married and started our honeymoon. No, not the wedding video. No, stop the music. <laughs> Wedding videos are intended to be watched once by the mother of the bride and never again. What? We all know that's true. We had a very good wedding video. Well, the real point here, I think, is Key West, okay? Yeah. Now, we did use our RV as a really fascinating way to get married. Yeah. And, you know, the name Long Long Honeymoon had to come from somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you've never been to Key West, you got to go. Yeah, absolutely. I think just camping waterfront on that crystal blue green water is just really a unique experience. Key West itself is completely unique. I mean, you are literally on an island. You're in the southernmost point in the continental United States. One really quirky aspect of life in Key West are the resident chickens. Locals call them gypsy chickens. There are chickens just freely roaming the streets. Uh, hens and roosters and little baby chicks. There are a lot of slightly crazy people in Key West, which maybe is one reason I enjoy it so much. It's a party place. It is, but it's also a very interesting place to visit for the nature. Just the snorkeling, the scuba diving. Like yeah. instead of doing the usual the rehearsal dinner, we took a snorkeling trip mm -hmm. and it was just a blast. Yeah. So put Key West on your radar screen for a great RV trip. Next, I personally love seeing bears. And in Haines, Alaska, we were seeing bears in the campground. Yeah, I mean, we, lots of bears. It wasn't just the occasional bear sighting. It was just bears everywhere. I'm talking about big wild grizzlies lumbering back and forth to the Chilkoot River because the salmon were in season and the bear kind of had an all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah, so they were so stuffed full with salmon that they weren't interested in you, which was great. Watching them fish was really fascinating. So a lot of guys would be fishing off this bridge that runs over the river and there would be a massive grizzly bear beneath the bridge having its lunch. <laughs> I've never really felt threatened by the grizzly bears. Uh, bears aren't really looking at us as a food source, especially when they have all that fresh fish that they can eat. Speaking of unique experiences. And speaking of wild animals. Hey, <laughs> the next experience that we really enjoyed was our stop at the Sturgis Bike Week Rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. We are not motorcycle people. We're more like bicycle people. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really fun to visit Sturgis and experience the whole wild craziness that is Bike Week there. It's just so overwhelming, the amount of people, the number of motorcycles. It was a really fun experience and something that we probably wouldn't have done if we hadn't been crossing the country in our RV. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, you go to Sturgis and you're expecting, oh, there's going to be Hell's Angels, there's going to be biker gangs. And yeah, I'm sure there were all the above. But really, there are just a lot of great people there who like to have fun. They love America. They love the open road. Yeah. And they love having a good time. So if you like having a good time, you know, I would put Sturgis on your radar screen. It's kind of an RV slash camping event. There are yeah. huge campgrounds in that area that only open up 
for sturges. And that's the only time those campgrounds are open because there is such a massive influx of people to that small town that camping is sort of the option for a lot of people. And there's really a great mix of people. I yeah. mean, there's some rough and tumble bikers <laughs> and there's some, you know, Dennis from Poughkeepsie. And there's grandma. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget grandma, grandma on our scooter. Now, this is an event that I think is better if you have an RV. The Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque is this massive balloon, well, fiesta. <laughs> gathering, <laughs> gathering of balloonists. Of balloonists. <laughs> you know, huge hot air balloons, in, in, incredibly intricate designs, yes, colorful, entertaining. Balloons. It's one of the most photographed events in the country, apparently. But I think it's better if you have an RV because it starts at the crack of dawn, yes. literally. It starts at sunrise, and if you have an RV, you're staying like right on the site. Yeah, they have on-site camping, and they have a shuttle that runs from the campground to like the balloon staging area where they're getting ready to, to fly from. So it's super convenient, and the other thing is, once the balloons take off, most of them fly right over the campground area. So if you happen to go for a day and you don't want to go in to watch them take off, if you just hang out at your camper, then you'll see them pass right overhead. Yeah, if you have the type of RV where you have a ladder and you can just step up and walk on your roof, I saw people standing on the rooftop of their RV <laughs> watching all the balloons fly overhead. It's a great way to watch the fiesta unfold. All right, the next one is probably one of my absolute favorite things that we've done with our RV. We went to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. It was super easy to book a site and be in the French Quarter within like 10 or 15 minutes from leaving our campsite. Mardi Gras, I think, has this reputation of being like really vulgar. There's nothing vulgar about female anatomy. In fact, I believe in celebrating the female form. The human body is a beautiful thing. Sure. I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, I think a lot of people have this idea of Mardi Gras of just being like really over the top, really kind of dirty and, you know, sleazy a little bit. But if you do it the right way, it's not that way at all. In fact, I would say probably most of Mardi Gras is pretty tame. So don't do it the right way. Do it the fun way. So we are in the French Quarter on Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. We are deep in the lion's den. But we actually were there. There were a lot of families there, a lot of kids. If you kind of branch off from Bourbon Street and go out into the neighborhood areas, even the Garden District, same floats roll through there that come through the quarter, and it won't be nearly the number of people or the rowdiness that you experience down in the French Quarter. Although we did spend time in the French Quarter, and it really wasn't any different than it is any other time of year. It was probably a little more crowded, but it was a lot of fun. The music was great. The food is awesome as always. Lots of really cool floats. Next up, this is a really special, memorable experience that we enjoyed along the Alaska Highway in British Columbia, a place called Liard Hot Springs. You're kind of out in the middle of a rather rural area, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> And there's this stop where they have, a, I guess it's a provincial park for Liard Hot Springs, natural hot springs that are some of the most lush and beautiful we've ever experienced, I think. Like there, it's kind of a little Shangri-La along the Alaska Highway. Yeah, it's definitely worth a stop for a night or two if you are traveling to Alaska. It's kind of a welcome reprieve from just the driving, driving, driving <laughs> of getting to Alaska. Something about Liard Hot Springs that I found was kind of unique. It's sort of this long creek and you can swim around in the creek and there are different tiers or levels that they've set up in the creek. The closer you are to the source of the hot water, basically boiling out of the ground, yeah. the hotter it's going to be. So if you want to go and have a really hot soak, you can get up close to the water source 
And I mean, it's so hot, it will scald your skin. Then if you want cooler water, you can swim downstream. And if you swim far enough downstream, the water gets pretty chilly and cold. Yeah, it's refreshing because you can sort of go back and forth between the hot and the cool. The next experience that was really something that we'll never forget are the glaciers calving at Kenai Fjords National Park. We took a day-long boat trip out to the glaciers so we could sort of see them calving up close. And for those of you who aren't familiar, calving is sort of when like bits of the, the glacier break off and fall into the water and it makes this really unique sound. And then of course there's the big splash when the you know chunk of ice hits the water. But we also saw whales and orcas on that trip and it was just really beautiful breathtaking scenery and not many places in the world where you can experience that. Yeah. We were in Seward and because of the big earthquake that happened there in the 1960s, all that waterfront property has been set aside for RVs. Mm -hmm. it, that ground is considered too unstable to build permanent structures. So you have beautiful places for RV camping. Yeah, you, you just back right in and you're right there on the waterfront. It is dry camping, but it, the, the scenery just can't be beat. There are fire pits, you know, you could build a fire there next to the beach. You can watch otters swimming out yeah. there in the water. It's just a fantastic place to RV camp. And again, I think having an RV put us right there on the waterfront. Next up, we're going back down to South Florida, Dry Tortugas National Park. This stands out as our most unique national park experience because Dry Tortugas is basically an island southwest of Key West, this huge fort that was built back in the 1800s out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. And it's really just a fascinating day trip to go out there to the national park. And if you're into tent camping, they actually have a campground there on the property. So this is sort of linked to Key West, but it's separate from Key West because you, know, you have to take a boat to get out there. It's about a three hour ferry ride to get there. And if you've never heard of Dry Tortugas, we do have a detailed video online so just look up Loloho Dry Tortugas and you will find it. Alright, next up one. is the Mary Todd schooner in Bar Harbor, Maine. We took a sort of scenic cruise, I guess, on this schooner when we were in Bar Harbor, and it was a really cool experience. It's a beautiful boat, and if you take the tour, you'll get the chance to help hoist the sails, and it's a lot harder than it sounds. And when you're in that area, you can also go see the first sunrise in the continental U.S. in Acadia National Park. Yep, and at the top of Cadillac Mountain. Next, one of the most unique scenic drives we have ever taken, and it's in Capitol Reef National Park in Utah. Capitol Reef National Park is a park you may not have even heard <laughs> of, but it's one of the mighty five Utah National Parks. It's a very small park, so you don't have to spend a lot of time there to see it, but it's definitely worth a visit. So if you ask somebody, where's the scenic drive, they're gonna point you to this one, I can pretty much guarantee. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, just an incredibly unique scenic drive because you are kind of down in what feels almost like a, a canyon or a crevasse, yeah. and you're surrounded by this otherworldly landscape of almost alien rock formation <laughs> that just juts up on either side of your vehicle. Yeah. And so you just wind your way through these valleys or canyons or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And it's pretty narrow, so it's really an interesting perspective to be at because usually when you 
take a scenic drive, you know, you're up high and you're sort of looking off a ridge. And this is just the complete opposite of that. You're just down in that valley. You're just looking up and you're, the, the walls are sort of closing in on you a little bit. So it's a really cool drive. And at the end of the drive, there was a hiking trail and we went on kind of a late afternoon hike. We were the only people on the trail. You will see petroglyphs, which are ancient Native American carvings in the rock. And it's just kind of a magical experience, especially if you're just out there by yourself. Yeah. It really makes you reflect and think about life. <laughs> <laughs> and how short of a time you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. So next up is another spot in South Florida that is super unique and a really cool experience. It's driving through the Everglades, specifically the Big Cypress National Preserve. The thing that makes this drive so unique, it's basically a two lane highway that runs east to west on that very southern tip of Florida. And it takes you through the Everglades where there are so many alligators that you can't even wrap your head around it. We literally would be driving down the road and there is sort of these water canals off to one side. And the canals aren't very deep, but they have a lot of alligators in them. And sometimes we would stop and there would be 15 or 20 alligators and they would just be piled on top of each other huge alligators that were 10 and 15 feet long and they would just disappear into that water and you would never know they were there if you hadn't seen them crawl in. So it really sort of shows you how alligators can really hide right there in plain sight if you don't know what you're looking for. Yeah, alligators down there are about like squirrels in other parts of the country. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's an alligator. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about this earlier. There are other parts of the country where you'll see the occasional alligator, you know, other parts of Florida, South Georgia, South Carolina, but you're not going to see them like you see them in South Florida because they are so big and they're so plentiful. Yeah, they say that the Spanish conquistadors, the early explorers when they came into South Florida, were completely terrified of the alligators they encountered. Yeah. And after seeing them, I could understand why. Especially back then with the tools they were probably using to defend themselves against alligators. And so, you know, they sort of thought they were almost a little indestructible. From alligators to moose, one of my favorite experiences that we've had with our Airstream was in Grand Teton National Park. We were there for the first snow of the season, and there was a mother moose with two young calves who've been making daily trips through the campground to get to the Grovant River. Well, on this one particular morning, when the first snow fell, those calves were seeing snow for the first time because they had just been born that spring of that year. And so we watched them for an hour while they played in the fresh falling snow right behind our Airstream. I mean, we literally lifted the blind next to our bed because we have a rear bedroom RV, looked out the back window and saw Mama Moose with her two babies playing in the snow. That was a magical experience. Hi. How about this for an RV park? Yeah, that's pretty funky. Huh? All right, from the wilds of Wyoming to the asphalt jungle. When we camped at the Liberty Harbor RV park in New Jersey and caught the ferry from our campground to New York City, right there in Manhattan at the Wall Street Ferry Terminal it ran every day, and so that was our sort of daily commute while we were staying there at that campground to get into the city. And it was really, really cool because I think a lot of times if you are visiting New York City, you know, you fly in, you take a cab into the city, and you kind of see it from that perspective. But it was really cool being across the water 
looking at that skyline every night and then the ride in on the ferry was just really beautiful. Now, this particular visit to New York with our RV gave me a different perspective on the city because mm -hmm. I had done a lot of business in New York City over the years. I've made many, many business trips to New York and usually ended up staying in some big hotel somewhere like around Times Square or whatever. Not that the campground was nice at all. I mean, you know, it <laughs> it's was, basically a parking lot. Yeah, a glorified yeah. parking lot at best. But that daily trip over to New York and then just lingering in New York with our RV. We had the luxury of time to linger and just kind of soak in the city as a local would. And it yeah. just gave me a different perspective on the city. Finally, weird and wacky Quebec. <laughs> All right, I've already riled up a few Quebecers out there. I like Quebec, personally. Yeah. You know, Quebec is a province in Canada that kind of goes its own way. Yeah. They speak French first and foremost. Road signage is in French. Menus in restaurants are in French. When you go to Quebec, you know you're in Quebec. Yeah, they, fly no the, <laughs> they fly the Quebec flag really as prominently or more prominently than the Canadian flag. Mm -hmm. When we were there, it was just after they'd had a big vote and they almost seceded from Canada. <laughs> it was really close. They're really proud uh, to be Quebecers. They're proud of their French heritage and you feel it when you go there. I don't hear a lot of people talking about going to Quebec, but to me, Quebec had a very European feel because of that French influence. And we really enjoyed just having our RV up there. Yeah, it just made it feel, you know, like an international experience, more so than you usually feel when you go into Canada. When you're in Quebec, try the poutine. If you've never had poutine, it's one of the most brilliant culinary inventions of all time. French fries, gravy, and cheese curds. It's really good. It's health food. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry guys, this was one of those weeks where we're not gonna talk about tire blowouts. We're not gonna talk about brain tumors. We're not gonna talk about dump stations. We hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, we're Sean and Christy. You know what this is and you know what you need to do. So why even say it? Subscribe, like, comment. Share with your friends. If you have had some particularly special experiences with your RV, share them in the comments. We really encourage everyone to check out the comments beneath this video and you'll maybe get some other ideas for places you could take your RV and special experiences you can enjoy with it. We going bye bye. Lolo. Say bye baby girl. Say bye bye. Say bye. She's like I just want to be with Sean. Sweet babe. <laughs>